In the midsummer, enthusiasm for gardening can start to wilt. Absolutely. So how can you get re-energized about tending to your garden? Colleen Plimpton is, the, is a professional gardener and the author of the award-winning memoir, Mentors, Mentors in the Garden of Life. And How interesting. Right. She's back with tips for cultivating a colorful August garden. And it's tough when it is in, we haven't gotten a lot of rain, right? It is tough. It's usually difficult in the summertime, but here's what I got to tell you. August in the garden is the wild, wild west. Really? So what we need to do is get our cowboy hat on. <laughs> Protect yourself. Get, get out our weapons <laughs> and start tending to the garden. What you want to do is get in there and deadhead and weed and prune. And then you too can have a beautiful, colorful garden. Yes, and you have quite a garden. I do. You really we have some do. Some pictures. Uh, that this is an amazing garden. Look at this. Wow. This is my garden in early August, and as you can see, it's very colorful. And these are some of the flowers I picked just this morning in my garden. See, my garden doesn't look like this at all, Colleen. Mine doesn't look as, as colorful. I don't believe you, Jocelyn. Absolutely. This <laughs> <laughs> killed a lot. You've been able to really keep the flowers I may have, but I've killed a lot too. Oh, yeah. Okay. I kill plants every year, believe me. But I grow so many different things, different types of annuals and perennials and vegetables and flowers and trees and shrubs, so that I always have color. And that's important. It does take some planning. When you go to purchase something in the nursery in the spring, get something that'll bloom in the fall too. So you keep that color going all season long. But you do have to keep up with the watering. There's my favorite watering can. Do you have any tips for <laughs> This is your best friend for the summer. It's been so hot this past oh, summer. Oh my gosh, it's been warm. One of my tips is keep your watering can full so that when you go out to water, you don't have to fill it with the rain barrel water or the hose. Right. And you know what? Have a pretty watering can. I love this shade of blue. It looks good in my garden. So <laughs> I'm more tempted to pick it up and use it. Okay. That's one of my tips. The other thing is make sure that you're on top of the critters. Make sure that you're using something against the slug, something organic, please, and there are products like that. Make sure that you're combating the deer. There's my good old deer repellent. Oh, yes, yeah. we've had that before. <laughs> Uh, yep. last time. Okay. Four ingredients, easy to use, but in order to have a full colorful garden in Connecticut, you need to repel the deer and sometimes the slugs. And tools. It's really important to have good hand tools that you like, that feel good in your hand. It looks like you just pulled them out of the garden <laughs> uh, earlier I, this morning. I did. Yes, I did. As a matter of fact. The dirt. It's <laughs> still there. Yeah. Well, I, I always want to know, can I still plant flowers or pl plant any kind of anything in my garden in August? You can, but there are some caveats. And one of them is you have to keep whatever you plant really well watered in August because the heavens don't always provide. And make sure that you get something containerized. Buy it in a nursery in a container like that little Creeping Jenny is. And then put it in the ground with some good compost or good organic amendments keep it well watered. You might want to shade it for a day or two, like with one of those lightweight lawn chairs. But other than that, yes, of course, you can plant any time during August and September and even into October. I thought it was interesting. That was a, a Creeping Jenny. And it has a, an evil brother, yes, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. Creeping Jenny is a wonderful plant to have in your garden because she's chartreuse and she's a ground cover and she looks pretty with all kinds of plants. But her brother is Creeping Charlie and you don't want Charlie anywhere near your garden. And that's because it's that's very invasive. It will be invasive. Yes, it will. This one you can control a little more? Yes, you can. And she looks so pretty with all kinds of flowers. And, and, you, have, and you have them everywhere in your, in your garden? I have all kinds of things everywhere in my garden. Yes, <laughs> I do. And you know what's what because you label everything. I do. That's another thing. Labeling is so important. Get out your good, sturdy plastic labels. Get out a permanent marker that says industrial, not okay. just an ordinary Sharpie. And you label what you've got and then stick it in the ground. And usually they'll stay there. Sometimes you get little neighborhood kids, you know, come along That's and lift them. Mine, so for or some switch reason, them. Disappear. Or switch them, yes. Is that, that what you did? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> then it's a guessing game. But it is important to label because if you grow something you just love or people come to your garden and admire it you want to be able to tell them what it is and understand that we can actually go visit your garden oh absolutely I love to have visitors <laughs> my garden is open several times during the growing season and the next time it's going to be Saturday the 20th of August from noon until 4 everybody's welcome people come they bring their kids photographers come and we talk gardening we have a good time is there a cost associated no, with this? It's oh, free. It is. Yes. And we get to talk to you to get some advice, right? Yep. You'll see me with this hat on. Your cowboy hat. <laughs> My cowboy hat. <laughs>
<laughs> All right, that sounds terrific. Um, did we forget anything or about uh, planting this time of year? It's important to okay. wear gloves, protect your hands. Yes. It is important to have a good weeder because this is one of the really neat things. This guy gets in and gets those dandelions out and gets those other deep-rooted weeds out. So have something that's comfortable in your hand that you will use. And again, it's got some blue on it. Matches my watering can. It's pretty. And yeah. the best time to pull weeds right after when it, after it rains. Oh, when it, when it rains. When it rains. You, you got it. That? Yeah, because you can pull up, pull up and the roots come up. With Bingo. It. That's <laughs> right. It's easier to do it then. That's right. Keep on top of the weeding. Yes. Keep on top of the watering. And you'll have a beautiful garden. And next right. time you come, I'm going to get the, uh, the memo. The pink you guys memo? have pink <laughs> memo. I didn't get the pink memo. All right. That's okay. It all coordinates. All right. We're just about out of time. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, it's great to have welcome. you, Colleen.